Hey, welcome back. So recently I've been playing a lot with Claude Code and one of the cool things about Claude Code is that it has access to the Bash shell as one of its inbuilt tools. Now that gives huge amount of flexibility to Claude Code because if you need to extend things, you don't always need to add an MCP server. For example, if I wanna get the time within Claude Code, there is a built-in time command in the Bash shell. If I want to be able to go off to the internet, then you can obviously access the curl command. So basically it opens up the ecosystem to Claude Code without necessarily having to have an MCP server for every single action. And that gives us a huge amount of flexibility because ultimately underneath the hood, Bash is a scripting language. So we can take the capabilities of Bash shell, create scripts, and then have Claude automatically install them and execute them as tools. And that's what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna to show you how you can use Bash Shell scripting to extend the capabilities of Claude code and just have it automatically install it from a GitHub repo. So let's bring this to life for a second. You can see I've got uh, a folder here called Bash Tools Record. There's nothing within here. Um, I'm gonna open up Claude uh, for a second here. And again, just to show you this in action, if I say something like, what is the current time? What will happen here is Claude doesn't have any time tools, but it does have access to Bash, as you can, as I was explaining there. So you can see here, it's gonna say, I'll check the current time for you. It's gonna call Bash and it's called date, and then it comes back with the time. And again, if I wanted to, I could just run date command there myself, and you can see it comes back with the date. So that is, really powerful, right? Because it can expand its use. Anything that you can do within the shell, you are gonna be able to do within Claude Code. Now, if we combine that with the fetch tool, for example, so let's say I say something like, get me the latest AI news articles uh, from uh, HTTPS uh, techmeme.com, then in this case, it doesn't need to use Bash, it's gonna use the fetch tool and then uh, you'll see there, I'll fetch the latest articles from TechMeme for you. Do you want to allow uh, Claude to fetch this content? I am gonna say yes in this case. So it's gonna go off to techmeme.com. It will come back with the answers and then it's gonna tell me the top uh, five AI articles on tech meme today. And there you go, you can see there the top five article is XAI sues Apple and OpenAI, Silicon Valley, blah, blah, blah. blah. Anyway, the, the point is, these two commands combined together are hugely powerful because actually, if you think about it, um, Bash is a scripting language. So if I can then create scripts that do interesting things and Cloud Code has the ability to execute Bash scripts, then technically I could host my Bash scripts in something like my GitHub repo and have it use the fetch command to pull the command install it and then execute that. Let me show you what I mean. And I'm gonna say using tools from github.com, Chris Hey UK, Chuck AI Bash Tools, we'll go through this in a second, blob mains llm.txt, do a Wikipedia search for Alan Turing. So I'm gonna run that. And what you are gonna see here is it says, I'll search Wikipedia for Alan Turing using the tools from the GitHub repo. So it's gonna go off to my LLM's text. I'm gonna explain that in a second. Um, but it's got that just now, and then it's uh, gonna say, now let me install and run a Wikipedia search tool. So you see here, it's offering to do the install. It's doing, you do a curl, um, it's gonna pull the, this thing called an install.sh. I'll show you that in a second. It's gonna install the wiki.search tool. So I'm gonna say, yes, you can install that. So it's gonna go and install that on my local machine. And then um, <laughs> once it's installed that, um, is want to execute it again using bash. So it's gonna say echo. The query is gonna be Alan Turing. It's gonna pipe it into wiki.search and uh, it's gonna use the JQ command as well. So I'm gonna say yes. I'll explain what all of this means and we'll say proceed. And therefore it's gonna come back and it says, okay, true. So it's been able to go and execute uh, that tool. And then it's came back uh, with the results for uh, that tool. Now, if I wanted to, let's just copy this for a second and we are, we'll open up a new terminal here. And then if I run echo Alan Turing Wikipedia search there, you see it's came back with uh, the results for the search. And of course I can change this. It doesn't need to be Alan Turing. It can be uh, Ada Lovelace. 
Um, in fact, it could be anything that Wikipedia answers and you see it's gonna come back with those articles. How that is actually working is if I go into my uh, local bin directory, you see here, there is a wiki.search tool. So what's actually happened with that, it's installed into my local bin directory, the wiki.search. Now, if I wanted to, I could get it to execute one of the other tools in there. So as, as well as the Wikipedia tool, it's also got a hello world tool in there. So if we just run that for a second, so now using the same tools, execute hello world, it's gonna go back to my llms.txt. It's then gonna, realize it needs to install that as well. It's gonna do the installation as it did before. That will end up, so it says here, I want to install Hello World in uh, my local bin directory. And I remember here, I don't have that. So I'm just gonna say yes, um, and then it's gonna install that. If I come back in here for a second, you can now see Hello World has appeared and then it wants to execute uh, that, and then it's gonna come back with Hello World. So if again, if I take that echo command over here, uh, we'll just CD away from this for a second. It doesn't matter where I am. Um, let's let's come back into, yeah, let's just run echo here and you see it runs the hello world because I've installed this in my local bin directory. So let's be really clear what's happened there for a second. Claude code has went off to this llms.txt, has learned how to install my bash script. It's installed it in my local bin directory. I've given it permissions and then it's executed that. That is hugely powerful and flexible and it's only using two tools, but it's extending its ecosystem based on the tools that it's got available. So how does that actually look? Well, actually, if we go into my uh, repo for a second, um, again, the repo is hosted at, you can go to Chris Hay UK, Chuck dash AI bash tools. Um, and then you are gonna have uh, full access to um, the tools that are available. Let me just break down a few things. So the Wikipedia search one is here. So you just need to go into, um, you just need to go into the tools wiki and then there is a search. And as you can see, this is just a bash script, right? So it's the bash script and lang language. And, and again, I'll go through this in sort of detail later on, but it's very easy to get started with it, right? So all we're doing here is, um, telling what the usage is, you know, go, go, um, this is how, you know, this is how you're gonna execute this command. Um, it's gonna say what the schema of the call is to make it easy for Claude Code to go and be able to run it. It's gonna tell it what dependencies it needs. So in this case, it's gonna need the JQ and curl. So it's using JQ, which is JSON query. It uses that to basically work with um, uh, structured JSON and then curl to go and make um, web calls in that sense. And then again, it's here, it's just gonna read in your input, read in your query. You see this JQ tool is gonna, gonna uh, basically uh, look at your query and then extract out um, what the query was. And then it's gonna URL encode it and then it's gonna perform the search and then it's gonna output a result with the title, the page, snippet, etc. And again, the hello world is probably simple there, but same sort of thing, it tells you what the usage is, what the schema is, um, you know, checks what it needs. So in this case, it's gonna need uh, the JQ command um, again, and then it's gonna read the JSON from standard in. So, and again, that's the same way as MCP. So if you think of SD, uh, uh, STDIO, um, MCP servers, they're using standard in and standard out as well. So it's gonna read from standard in um, what JSON was provided. It is then gonna extract a name or a greeting or excited repeated. It's gonna do some validation. Um, and then it's gonna generate um, with the JQ command uh, an output JSON. And you can see that here that I passed in an input JSON name world, and then it's outputted okay message timestamp uh, greeted there. And again, okay message timestamp greeted. So it's just outputting JSON. And that's the JQ tool that's handling the JSON handling. Uh, it stands for uh, JSON um, query. And then finally, there's this install.sh script and the install.sh script is really, um, it's, it's um, pretty complicated, but what it will help you do is it will actually install um, that tool whether it's Windows, Ubuntu, Mac OS, it works for anything there, and you can just use that. And again, I've got make commands associated with this as well. So if we go, uh, if I run make there for a second, and then we do a make test, for example, you see it's gonna execute all of the commands there. So you can use this to understand how this works. And then if you look at the GitHub repo for a second, um, if I go into my GitHub actions, 
you can see that, let's click on this, you can see it's been tested on Ubuntu, Mac, or some Windows. So even if I go into Windows, you can see it's done the installs to check the dependencies, and then it actually checks that the scripts work there. So if we go to run test script, you can see it's checking that hello world and all that work. Now, you're probably wondering yourself, oh my goodness, why are we going back to the world of bash scripts? I'm not saying we should be creating tools with bash scripts. I still think MCP service is the right way to go forward. But, you know, if you want to create something simple, um, you know, without an overhead there, it just gives you a different way of doing things. It's really powerful, right? So um, I just think it's an interesting kind of experiment. So to be able to build agents um, without necessarily having to install the tools, just doing that via bash becomes really interesting because I could have a big mono repo of tools. So it could be like um, Wikipedia search, get news headlines, etc. And then using that install script, as you saw there, it just automatically installs it and runs the tool. The other thing is, um, which is probably a difference over running this, um, you know, using something like Rust or whatever, is this isn't, I'm not installing an executable. So this is interpretable what the script is. So you can look at it and say, okay, it does this, etc. And it's kind of working with Claude code. So I think this is interesting. And I think maybe in another video, I'll show you how this works with something like agents. Now, as I said, there's a thing called an LLMs.txt here. This is probably the trick to this. So um, this is LLMs.txt is a, basically a standard for AI agents. So if you're gonna browse the internet, it's sort of like rather than looking at the human readme, go look at the LLMs.txt. And, and it's basically the guidance for AI agents and what to do here. So you can kind of see here, it's just a markdown file that's giving instructions um, to the tools. So installation first required before you use any tools, you must install it, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it also gives it a bunch of links to um, tools. So if, you, if it wants to see more about the installation guide, development guide, testing guide, API contracts, you can go to those docs and read about it. And then it's got a quick start to show how to use those various tools. So again, if you wanted to create your own tools, you just start adding more and more tools to the list there, and then off you go. So I think I think it's kind of interesting in that sense. Um, again, <laughs> do I think we're gonna be all creating bash scripts? Probably not, because they're a real pain to create. And let me show you what I mean by that. So if I come back into, let's, let's go back into um, that uh, same directory that we had earlier. So if we go here and do an LS, you see it's an empty directory, it's called bash tools. Um, just to give you an idea of how painful bash scripts actually are, let's create, and, and this gives you an idea how this works. So if I create something called plain demo.sh, um, and then uh, what we will do is open that up in uh, VS Code, and we'll create a very, very simple script to get started here. So you can see here, I'm gonna use a shebang. I'm basically saying uh, use bash script in that sense. Um, if I want to do plain text, I can just do a read. And this is single line, so I'm gonna say read, and I'm gonna get the name, and I'm gonna store that as a name variable. And then if I want to, um, I can check to see if there's, um, if name has been provided. If it hasn't been provided, then I can set a default. Bash is super painful, by the way, so even though I'm gonna do an if, I've got a minus Z as a, a string test, and then I'm basically gonna check to see if name has a value there. Um, and if it's not, then uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, set name is gonna be equal to, name is gonna be equal to world. Now, this is super painful. These spaces need to be maintained. If those spaces aren't there, um, it just throws a wobbly. Um, the next thing that's painful here is you see the then, you would think curly braces or something. No, bash is, you know, originally kind of born shell. Um, is what it stands for. It's created um, um, by a guy called Born, and and actually he took the basis off of Algol 68, and therefore Algol 68. How you end an if block is with phi fi, which is if backwards. So now I can just echo out the results. So we'll say hello, and we'll say name, and we'll save that. And then if I do echo, and we'll say Chris, and we'll pipe this into um, plain demo.sh, you get permission denied because I need to give it executable rights. So we'll just do plain demo. We'll run that one more time and you see it comes back with hello, Chris. That is a standard tool, right? So it reads from SD, uh, SDADIN, um, takes in the name, 
and then um, you know runs the script and echoes the output. Now, if I wanted to to use to understand JQ JSON query, remember we want to deal with structured uh, data or structured JSON files. I can create a new file. We're going to call that JQ demo dot sh. Uh, we'll do change mod u plus x. Uh, jq demo sh we'll come back into vs code for a second rather than me typing this all about um, i just want to run this very very quickly so you see same shebang as we had before i'm going to set some json so do you know name is alice age 30 blah blah blah, blah. here if i want to output all of the json you would just run jq dot and therefore you pass in your json uh, pipe it in jq dot will basically pipe it it will uh, echo it back out essentially if I want to extract a name, I just do jq.name. And then if I want to build a custom object, I can create that myself there. If I want to add a field, if I want to filter an array, uh, blah, 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 blah. So if I run that for a second and we just do, um, we can just run jq demo in that sense. You can see uh, it's outputted the original JSON. It's extracted the name Alice from there. In fact, if I come back in here and I change uh, that to be age, we run that one more time. You can see there, um, it's now extracted the age rather than the name. And then of course it's done this sort of transform of the output. And again, that's pretty much uh, everything that you need. So if I wanted to, I could combine that as a uh, another file. So I could take the plain text, et cetera, and do the structured JSON. So if I do touch um, demo json.sh, we'll do a change mod u plus x demo json.sh. Um, again, we'll come back into VS Code. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set um, the environment to bash again. Now what I wanna do, since I'm uh, working with the script that I'm gonna deploy, I'm gonna do a set minus E U O, um, and uh, it's gonna call the minus O pipe fail. This is just basically a sort of almost like a safety mechanism. So basically what it's saying there is if you, uh, if you get an error in the pipeline, you, you should fail the whole pipeline. So if you're chaining multiple commands together, um, and it's also telling you to exit on the first error there. Um, that's pretty much it. It's just a nice simple way of doing that. I'm gonna read the input and I'm just gonna do that by uh, <laughs> reading in the cat there. Now, before I use the read, I'm not gonna use read because JSON is multi-line, etc. So to read multi-line, you're gonna to have to use cat there. And now I can extract the name exactly as I did before. So I can just do use JQ. I can get the dot name attribute just as I did in the original demo. If I don't haven't provided a name, then I can just default that to world. So it would say world. So if I pass in hello, it'll come back with world. And then similarly, if I want to um, output um, some structured JSON, just as before, okay, remember on the original script, okay, message, etc. So I'm going to return some JSON, okay is true. And the message is going to be at uh, the name uh, sort of parsed in there. And all I need to do here is do an echo pass in my JSON. So name is going to be Chris, and then I'm going to pipe it into demo JSON.sh. And you can see it's returned some structured JSON. Okay, true, message hello, Chris. And again, if I come back to uh, my original code there on the hello world, you kind of see exactly these things. There's my set minus EU pipe fail. You know, and then if I come down here for a second, there's my read my JSON using cat structured uh, JSON there. And again, down here, I'm using the JQ command to output my message. And then of course, when I want to read, there we go, I'm using the JQ command again to extract name, greeting, whatever from the directory. So it basically works in the same way. So again, you can spend your own time, learn bash, whatever. But it, I think it just gives you a different way of working with some agents and creating some different bash tools and making use of the bash command on, on Cloud Code. Now, um, <laughs> hopefully you will have a bunch of fun with it. And, uh, and on that, I will catch you on the next video.